Here I'm going to show you six tips for some typical situations that might happen when you start learning alias. And the first is managing the windows. The control panel and diagnostic shade are docked windows. And if you keep an eye on this view cube, you can see that when I minimise them, the modelling window stretches out to fill the space. And then when I open them again, the modelling window is pushed over. And what can easily happen is that you undock a window by moving it. So to redock it, you just need to hold the shift key down and then click on the top tab and drag it over until it lines up with this outside edge. And then let go and it's docked again. Now the palette over here starts out as a floating window. So when I minimise that, it doesn't affect the modelling window at all, as it's just floating on top of it. But I could choose to dock this window in the same way, by using the shift key again, and moving it until it lines up with the outer edge, and then it docks. And the benefit of this is that the, the XYZ icon down here is always visible. And you can choose to dock any of the windows or keep them as floating, it's up to you. And one other common thing is to accidentally delete one of the windows. But you can always get them back again using the menus. This tip is for a problem that can sometimes happen when you're opening files. If you have one model already in the scene, and then you do a file open, and choose a replacement model, you typically want to say yes here. But if you mistakenly say no, then what you get is both files in the modelling window, but one of them is shown in green. And this green colour is the clue that stages are being used. And up here we have the stages tab, which allows you to switch between the two files. Now stages are useful, but as a beginner I would recommend that you avoid them. So if you ever see this green colour, then I'd recommend that you go back to the file menu and open the file again, but this time making sure that you say yes. Here is a quick fix for a small problem you sometimes get when you're using diagnostic shading. Occasionally you notice an apparent discrepancy between two surfaces, but this is just a difference in the specularity setting and you can fix it by just moving the specularity slider a little bit. And that then resets all the surfaces to the same setting. If you like to learn independently by just exploring the interface, then make use of the Help menu. And the most useful tool is What's This? which lets you just click on a tool to bring up the alias help page. Alternatively, if you just hover over a tool, then a help window pops up. And you can click on this help icon to open up the same help page. But if you find these tool tips annoying, then just simply turn them off in the General Preferences section. So go to Help, and then make your choice on the pop-up help. Here are some extra selection options that you can use for picking. When we were selecting surfaces in the wheel tutorial, I mentioned that the left mouse key worked as a toggle. So unpicked surfaces are selected, and vice versa. And most beginners stick with just using the left mouse key to start with. But it's possible to use the other two keys as well. The middle mouse key works as an add, and the right hand mouse key works as an unpick only. Now I'll cover these gradually as the tutorials progress, but if you're impatient to start using them, then I suggest that you look at the resources section of the website, where there's a 2011 update movie called Selection Options that gives you all the information you need to get started. And finally, if you like to use hotkeys, We've seen how there are some hotkeys already set up for some of the tools, like cut, copy and paste, for example. And over on the palette, if you use the right-hand mouse key on the palette tab, you can see the hotkeys for the palette tools. 
To change these or modify them, you can use Preferences, Interface, Hotkeys, Menus and modify either the menu or the palette tools just by finding the tool you want and typing in the new hotkey that you want to use and then clicking on Apply. And on the website there's a Quick Tips document that takes you through the steps to customise the hotkeys.